If you've been following along with the narrative surrounding the Ford F-150 Lightning, you've probably heard a great many things. It's a great truck. It's a great electric truck. It's a great F-150. It's the greatest F-150 ever made. It will help you figure out what to have for dinner and it will help you raise your children. Some of those things might be true, some of them might not, but what I know after driving the F-150 Lightning is that it takes everything we know and love about Ford's bestseller, adds a heaping helping of electrons, and has the potential of changing the truck game forever. We are driving a very, very popular configuration of the F-150 Lightning. This is the mid-range XLT with the extended range battery. Now, what does that mean? It means you'll get 320 miles to a charge 563 horsepower and 775 pound-feet of torque. And those are big numbers. The range number in particular is very impressive. But let's talk about the power for a second because it's not quite as explosive as the spec sheet would indicate. If I stand on the throttle, I'm going 35 miles an hour right now. Yeah, it presses me back in my seat, but it doesn't take me off guard. And mind you, I drive a lot of EVs, so I'm kind of expecting it, but even for someone that is getting their first EV, I don't think this power is going to be shocking, especially if you come from an F-150 with a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6. This is going to feel faster for sure, but it's more incremental than you might expect. It's also quieter. And now we expect that of an EV. We expect it to be quiet, but when I say quiet, I mean this powertrain makes no noise whatsoever. There is no acceleration mode. I can, or acceleration sound. I can kick it into sport mode and it's still just as whisper quiet as when I'm on the gas. Now, this is a half ton pickup truck, which means it is a body on frame vehicle. There's a frame, there's a body, you bolt them together and voila, you have a truck. But the Lightning doesn't really have any of the bad body on frame manners. I'm not getting a lot of like secondary motion when I hit a bump. It feels far more composed and stiff, if that makes any sense. I think part of this is down to the big slab of batteries that lower the center of gravity and sit in the F-150's floor. I think they have a secondary effect of kind of stiffening the entire thing. But for whatever is going on, I think it's the right approach. It, this feels like the most comfortable, compliant, composed F-150 I've ever driven. One of the things that Ford has tuned really well in this vehicle is the regenerative braking, the one pedal driving function. It takes a little bit of digging in the menus to activate, but once you're there, you have lift off and the car starts to slow, but it's not super immediate. It's really easy to modulate and the throttle response, I know there's no throttle, but for the accelerator response, for lack of a better word, is really well done. You can drive this thing with one pedal and just gently adjust your inputs to manage the speed. If you want to maintain a constant speed, you keep a constant pressure, but if you want to dial it back just ever so slightly, that's all it takes. It, the inputs are very, very easy to manage in this vehicle. And that goes for the brake pedal for the few times that you actually have to use it. It's not super grabby or difficult. Recharging the F-150 Lightning is perhaps the main disappointment in this truck. Running on a 400 volt electrical architecture, it can only recharge on a DC fast charger at a maximum rate of 150 kilowatts. Ford claims that you'll gain 54 miles in 10 minutes of charging while juicing from 15 to 80% takes 41 minutes. By comparison, you'll see dramatically quicker charging times from rivals with the Hummer EV going from 20 to 80% charge in just 24 minutes at a 350 kilowatt charger. That's despite having a far, far bigger battery pack. And a Rivian R1T, which is arguably more direct competitor to the Lightning, can charge at 210 kilowatts and will add a claimed 140 miles in 20 minutes. Home charging, where most EV owners fill their EV's batteries, is dependent on your setup. The more common 48 amp circuit will add about 20 miles of range per hour to the Lightning's 131 kilowatt hour extended range battery and 19 per hour with the 98 kilowatt hour base battery. Charging to full takes 13 and 11 hours respectively. If you're lucky enough to have access to an 80 amp circuit in the Ford Charging Station Pro, the extended range battery adds 30 miles of range per hour with no change for the base model. A full battery arrives after 10 or 8 hours depending on the pack. Prices for the 2022 Lightning start at $41,769, including a hefty $1,795 destination charge. But that impressive figure can increase very quickly. For example, the XLT I drove starts at $54,769, but adding the extended range battery adds an additional $19,500. Half of that is the battery itself, 
but the figure also includes an equipment upgrade that brings in 20 inch wheels, a 9.6 kilowatt upgrade to the standard Pro Power onboard system, an upgraded active safety suite, and heated front seats with a heated steering wheel. The $69,269 Lightning Lariat only demands $10,000 for the battery, while the range topping model, the Platinum, is only available with a larger battery and carries a starting price of $92,669. Half-ton pickups have only gotten more and more expensive in recent years as automakers add technology and features, but $92,000 for a truck, even a truck this good, is still an eye-watering sum. Now, I am not going to dive into the exterior of this vehicle because I've already done that once. You can go and look at our first look video where I spend a good chunk of my time talking about the exterior of the F-150 Lightning. What I am gonna tell you about is the cabin because now that we're actually using it in the real world i've got i've got some impressions now when i do these things i try very hard to pick what i think is going to be the volume trim level the one that most people are going to buy and in the f-150 lightning's case that is the xlt what i wasn't necessarily expecting was getting behind the wheel and finding a cabin that is pretty much identical to the gas powered f-150 it is pretty much indistinguishable you get the same 12 inch bezel-less touchscreen Yes, the 15 inch is available on other trims, but for right now, this one is just the 12 inch. You get the same 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. You get the same gear selector that folds down into the center console for the interior work surface. You get the same steering wheel. You get the same seats. You get the same grab handles. Everything is the same. As far as I can tell, the only difference is one little button right down here for opening the front. And that it makes sense. Ford's entire thing as it's been going forward with this electrifying its icons is saying, we're gonna take the vehicles that people know and love and we're going to add electric powertrains and we're going to make them better because of it. Now you can debate if that worked in the Mustang Mach-E. That is a pretty radical departure from the Mustang idea, but the cabin is just one major example in the F-150 Lightning of Ford taking one of its iconic vehicles and adding an electric powertrain and changing nothing else. It is extremely true to the gas-powered pickup trucks concept. And I think that is something that consumers, that especially the consumers that have been buying F-150s for years are going to really appreciate. Anytime an automaker comes out with a new EV, it's easy to get wrapped around the proverbial axle on things like charging speed and range. And look, those things are important. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you if they aren't. I'm also not gonna sit here and say that the Ford is the best in any one measure, because it's just not. But what it is, is familiar. This has been the best-selling vehicle in the United States for over 40 years. And the Lightning is going to work because it is familiar, because it's something that people can get into and they're immediately at home. The electric powertrain is new, but the rest of it isn't, and that is its strongest asset.